Hello dear students welcome to Pellin Paper Chemistry on YouTube With today's lesson we are going to revisit the topic of solutions and take care of a few doubts that you may have on this particular topic So are we ready Here I am going to share the same notes that I am going to upload on the site pen and paper chemistry so you can take advantage of it later on solution what is a solution simply when you dissolve a solute in a solvent is what we call as a solution now if you notice over here the word that i have used is dissolves right i'm not saying that salt is added to a solvent or salt is added to water no what the word that we are using over here is dissolves you can add sand to water right but it doesn't become a solution no it's not a solution because sand doesn't dissolve you can simply add to it So we have to be very very careful about the choice of words that we are going to use in chemistry what we call as keywords so when i dissolve salt in water my salt is the solute and water is the solvent the two of them when combined to give me what we call as a homogeneous mixture that means uniform throughout having the same properties throughout gives us what we call as a solution now this is one of the examples of solution where i have got a solid dissolved in a liquid you could also have a liquid dissolved in a solid do you know of any liquids dissolved in solids i'm going to leave these blanks for you to do this research for me gases can also be dissolved in liquids yes your aerated drinks correct what other examples can you think about gases being dissolved in liquids so ki go on fill in the blanks liquids dissolved in liquids glycerol in water what are the other examples you can think of you can research about in your day just look around and you will see plenty of examples of various types of solutions we are now going to introduce some new terms here unsaturated saturated and super saturated uh we'll take a very simple daily life example you come back from your school and you are very very hungry you desire for food you get one portion of rice and you want more right you are hungry you are unsatisfied still with one portion that's what i would call as an unsaturated solution a solution in which more amount of the solute can be dissolved notice the word here again dissolved at a particular temperature now let's say you've had two portions of rice and you are feeling satisfied right and you say okay ma i don't want to have more now when you are satisfied we use the word saturated that means a solution in which you cannot dissolve more amount of the solute again at a particular temperature now comes the interesting bit now on the table you see your favorite ice cream or let's say your favorite dessert now what happens yes of course who would want to resist their favorite dessert or their ice cream or the pudding or whatever is your favorite food so what do you end up doing you end up overeating right what we call as super saturated a solution 
which contains a more amount of the solute than it can dissolve at a particular temperature. Now, when we talk about a solid being dissolved in a liquid, it's not so easy to tempt it, right, with ice cream. So, how can we tempt it? Yes, of course. In order to go from saturated to super saturated, we actually have to heat the solution. Because we notice that the solubility of a solute in a solvent depends on temperature. With increase in temperature in general, not for all the cases, the solubility generally increases. So, you heat it, you dissolve more of the solute in the solvent, right? Now, just don't disturb it. Because if you disturb it, whatever was excess amount of the solute that you would have added, which will actually settle out of the beaker, it will settle at the bottom. Have you ever observed sugar syrup that we use for making various kinds of sweets and savouries? If you haven't done that, please do so. When you take sugar syrup and allow it to cool at, at, in a refrigerator, you will find that particles of sugar crystals will be seen at the bottom of the container. That means a super saturated solution has turned back to saturated. In fact, a lot more than that will also be released out. I hope you are taking down these notes and doing justice to the name of the channel, Pen and Paper Chemistry. What are the other factors which can affect the solubility of a solute in a solvent? Can you think? Let's take the example of you dissolving sugar in water and you dissolving salt in water. Right? Keep them at the same temperature. Now when you keep them at the same temperature, which one do you think will dissolve more and faster out of the two of them? Yes, of course. Our salt dissolves more as compared to sugar at a specific temperature. In fact, in the case of salt, you will find that with increase in temperature, solubility does not change appreciably. It does, but not to such a great extent as you would observe in the case of sugar. So, our nature of the solute, for example, the sugar or the salt, our nature of the solvent also affects solubility. So, you have temperature, you have nature of the solute, you have nature of the solvent. In fact, solutions where gases are involved, pressure is also one important factor factor in deciding solubility. Now I have been using the word solubility, solubility again and again. What is this solubility that I am talking about? Solubility is the next thing on the chapter. Technically speaking, solubility is the amount of solute required to saturate 100 grams of solvent at a particular temperature. Simply putting, how much of food you should have in order to satisfy yourself at that particular point of time. That's it. Not super saturated. Saturated. And how much are we talking about? 100 grams of the solvent at a particular temperature. Now, 
there are certain solutions in which the amount of solvent is more than the amount of the solute. So here, the amount of solvent being more than the amount of solute. So for example, in a glass of water, if I simply add a spoon of, water, of salt, right? That would give me kind of a dilute solution. Dilute. What is concentrated? So if in that same glass of water, I add 10 spoons of salt, there the amount of salt is much more than over here. So, with respect to the first solution, my second solution is concentrated. It is more concentrated. Now, if you see these terms are relative, right? So, usually in the laboratory you would have seen concentrated sulfuric acid, dilute sulfuric acid there. When you talk about concentrated, the amount of sulfuric acid is much higher compared to water as compared to in a dilute solution. But to make things more number oriented or more mathematical, we have various ways of expressing the concentrations of the solution. That means how much solute is present in a given quantity of the solvent or the solution is what we are going to study now. We are going to talk about in all a total of nine different ways. Yes, there could be other ways as well. But if you understand the fundamentals of these, met of these various ways of expressing you would be able to break the other examples of or other ways also in a similar fashion. Here I would insist that you should not memorize. Try and understand. If you understand logically, you don't have to learn any of the formulas. You don't have to sit and memorize them like a parrot. Right? But if you still would want to keep um, the formulas handy for a quick bird's eye view, make sure that you take an old calendar or a big sheet of paper and write down the formula that you are going to study in this particular topic. And of course, other topics as well and keep it close to your study area, study table, study bed, wherever you sit and study. That's it. The first formula that we are going to discuss is the percentage by weight or mass percentage. That means the mass expressed as a percentage. Percentage of what? So, for example, we say that in the next chemistry test, you get 9 out of 10. What is your percentage then? Yes, of course, 9 out of the total multiplied by 100 and you get 90%. Oh, teacher, this is so easy. Why are you explaining such simple things? That's what I'm trying to explain to you that this topic is very, very easy. Just connect it to your daily example. So, when I say percentage by weight, what does percentage by weight mean? The amount of the solute in grams expressed as the amount of the solution, expressed as a percentage of the amount of solution. So, Amount of solute in grams divided by amount of solution in grams into 100. So the mark scored by you divided by the total marks into 100. Mass of solute in grams present per 100 grams of the solution. Now be very, very careful about where we are going to use solution where we are going to use solute and where we are going to use solvent. Be very, very careful. Note these down. 
Now, what about when we have to deal with liquids or gases dissolved in a liquid? In such a case, it is more appropriate to talk in terms of the volume percentage rather than the mass percentage. So, we are simply going to modify our above definition and say that the percentage by volume of a solution is simply the volume of solute present 100 cc of the solution. Now, in line with the different units of volume which are used, we can also convert this cc to decimeter cube. But we have to remember that in such a case, we will take the volume of the solution also in decimeter cube. What is the relation between the different units? CC or centimeter cube, how is it related to the liter and centimeter cube? So, 1 liter as you can very clearly see is 1000 centimeter cube and as uh, liter, sorry, decimeter cube is a more accepted unit. We can also write it equal to 1 decimeter cube. So, 1 liter or 1 decimeter cube are one and the same thing and they are each equal to 1000 centimeter cube. The next definition is strength of a solution. Strength is how much solute how much solute is present in a given volume of the solution. Now, usually the amount of the solute is taken in gram and the volume of the solution. Again, I would request you to pay special attention to whether we are talking about the solute or the solution. So, here till now we have been speaking about solution only. The amount of solute present per liter of the solution and as we have seen above there is equivalence between liter and decimeter cube the above definition that is instead of per liter we can also write it as per decimeter cube of the solution but remember that in that case the unit of strength will change to gram per decimeter cube. I hope you are writing all these definitions down because they are going to come in very very handy when you are revising and not able to watch YouTube videos and they will come in very handy for quick reference as well.